Hey, what's going on everyone? Today we're going to be taking a look at New Air's 48 quart portable cooler, refrigerator, freezer. It has dual zones, dual compartments. You can use it however you want. We'll get into all that here in this video coming up. But today we're going to be doing a real world test with this cooler. And why I was excited to get it is because we're going to take it to the BMX track today. My son is racing his first BMX race and it's a super hot day out here. It's 87 degrees, I believe. So we're going to be pre-chilling this thing today, loading it up with some popsicles and some ice cream sandwiches in one side and some drinks in the other. And then we're going to take it down there and see how it works. But what's awesome awesome is this thing works off of battery power this is a battery powered refrigerator freezer so we're going to be using this today to see how long it lasts in this heat and this thing's going to be sitting in my wife's car so it's going to really really put it through the test we are going to pre-chill this thing first with my portable power station now you can pre-chill it with the 12 volt ac adapter that plugs into the wall and that's going to use about 90 watts because the power adapter is not really very efficient and then we're gonna put the battery in, put it in my wife's car, plug it into her cigarette lighter port while we're on the way down there. It should run off her car. And then once we shut the car off, it should remain running with the battery. And we're gonna see if it can last for a few hours on that battery and keep everything nice and cold. But this is a really awesome feature to have. This is a 173 watt hour battery. So I've had this cooler now for a few days and I've been testing it, trying to see how it works. And my first test on that battery, the cooler ran for a good five hours and then I fell asleep. So I don't know exactly how long it ran the first time. Now on the second test I did, I left the cooler in my house at a 75 degree ambient temperature running on the battery with freezer mode on one side, fridge mode on the other, and it ran for eight hours straight. Now I was super impressed with that for running eight hours when it was in half freezer mode. Now, like I said, it was 75 degrees ambient temperature inside the house. So if it was hotter out like 85 or 90, you might get maybe half of that because this thing would probably run nonstop. But you sh should get at least around four hours out of this battery, even if the refrigerator ran pretty much almost non-stop so here's the dual compartments in here you have a smaller compartment up top and a larger compartment on this side you have a drain plug in the bottom here for draining out the water if you need to defrost it or do some cleaning in here and the baskets are removable so you could take these in your house load them up leave them in your refrigerator till you're ready to go somewhere on your trip then you could just toss the baskets back in here you have a building cutting board up here in the lid which is really nice and it sits right on top, locks in for when you're using it. That's a really nice, cool little feature that they give you there. Now there is a spot where they could have put a second one that would have been nice to see a dual cutting board or just something in there to give it a little bit more insulation value on the lid. That would have been nice. And another cool feature is this lid is removable very easily and you could flip it around, put it in the other way, if I can line it up correctly, and then essentially you can make it open either way depending on how you have this cooler situated in your vehicle but when you take this lid off make sure you have it in the right spot it comes out very easily you can't have it completely open when you take it out so just keep that in mind now when i got this cooler the other day and unboxed it unfortunately it was banged up really bad in shipping the handle was broken off of it there's a handle that comes around here that extends for you to be able to wheel it around that handle was broken off and this wheel was bent really bad up into this housing here now i did reach out to new air and i'm waiting for a response to see what they want to do about that but in the meantime we're going to continue with this one and i'm going to do my testing with this one because i'm excited to test it out and try it and i want to use it for the bmx race tonight now they did send me this for testing and review and also the battery which can be purchased separately on their website for $200 but later on in the video we'll get into some of the features about the battery how you could charge it how you can use it and things like that in detail and if you want to pick one of these up I'll leave an affiliate link down below where you can purchase one of these directly from their website or on Amazon if you guys do use that link I will make a small commission at no extra cost to you that's what helps support this channel and I'll try to leave a coupon code down there for you as well if I can get one all right guys so now we're going to do the pre-chill on this I'm going to remove the battery from now now you can leave the battery in there and it will charge off the dc with your car running at about 24 watts but we're going to remove that do the pre-chill with just this so we can see how much power the refrigerator actually uses so i'm plugged in here to my opez portable power station it's at 73 percent and we're going to go ahead and turn the refrigerator on it has a really nice touch screen up front here i'm going to set the front compartment at 35 degrees and then to get to the other 
compartment while this is flashing, you hit the settings button. And I'm gonna set this one down to zero degrees and we're gonna see how long it takes to get to that temperature. It says I have 11.9 volts coming in and the compartments are currently at 73 and 74 degrees. So one other thing I wanna show you guys that's not in the manual is you could shut each compartment off individually and only use one or the other. Now you can use either one of these compartments as either a refrigerator and a freezer. How I like to use it is the small one as a freezer or you can use both sides as a freezer, both sides as a refrigerator, or this side as a refrigerator and the larger side as a freezer. However you wanna do it, you can do it, which is really nice. But if you wanna disable one of those compartments and only use one, all you have to do is hold down the plus button and the settings button for a few seconds, and it will disable the bigger side, the side on the left here. And if you wanna disable the smaller side, which is on the right here, all you have to do is hold down the negative button and the settings button and you will see that it will disable the smaller side and then turn the bigger side back on. So you can't disable both sides. I don't know why you would unless you hit the power button, but if you did want to disable just one, you can do that and you just do the same thing to turn it back on. Now, as I said, that wasn't in the manual, so that's something good to know. Now I do have this set on max mode and currently it is using 35.6 watts of power. So that's really, really low power. I'm actually impressed already that it's using that little minimum bit of power, 35, 37. So pretty accurate as far as both of these readings here. So now when you're running this cooler off of DC in your car, AKA your cigarette letter port, this cooler could drain your battery if the port remains on when your car is not running. Now they do give you three levels of protection for that. You could set it to low, medium, or high. On high, it will disable the cooler when your battery has a higher voltage so that it enables your car to restart and it not drain the battery. Or you could put it in low mode and it will use more of your battery capacity in your vehicle to run the cooler. However, that could cause your battery to go too low and your vehicle not to start. Now I did notice when using the internal battery in it, you do have to have this on the low setting or it will give you the F1 code before the batteries anywhere near being dead. So you will have to have that on low if you're using the internal battery to get the best performance. Now to change that setting, you just hold the settings button down for about four or five seconds until you see the L flashing. And then you hit it again for medium, hit it again for high, and then just let it go and it will set itself here. Now to change from max mode to eco mode, which would use less power, but on this pre-chill test, we're gonna leave it in max. You just hit the settings button and you could change it from eco or max, which is really nice and easy to do. All right, so let's see how much power we're using now. 67 watts of power currently, 70 on the Opez. So it definitely did increase the power draw here, kicking this thing into high. It did take a few minutes for that. It's been eight minutes and 37 seconds so far. And I haven't really seen the temperature come down too much yet. Two degrees here on the larger side, but nothing on the smaller side yet. So what's odd is it's showing 11.1 .1 volts here and it's showing three bars on the battery. However, I'm at 12.13 volts here. So not quite sure why that doesn't match. It's drawing 6.22 amps right now at 74 watts. So pulling a pretty good amount here to cool this thing down from 74 degrees. All right, so we're at 15 minutes and it dropped from 75 degrees down to 49 degrees. So it's dropping pretty quickly now. It took a few minutes to start dropping and we're using 67 watts, 5.54 amps. 12.27 volts down there and 11.2 up here. So still not sure why that voltage is different than the voltage I'm showing down here. I know this is pretty accurate because I've tested it before. So at 20 minutes, it's down to 56 degrees on the big side and 25 degrees Fahrenheit on the small side. All right, so we're 30 minutes into the test, 43 degrees on the refrigerator side, 22 degrees on the freezer side, and we're currently drawing 44 watts, 3.63 amps. All right, it's been 45 minutes. The refrigerator compartment is actually down below what we have it set at. It's at 29 and I have it set for 35. The freezer compartment's down to 11, so it's definitely pre-chilled enough. We're gonna leave it go till it hits zero, but we're currently using 61 watts of power and we used 5% off the Opez. We started at 73%, it's down to 68. So now I'm gonna go ahead and load this thing up with drinks and get it ready to go. 
and according to these it's about 38 degrees in the bottom of the cooler and about 27 degrees in the freezer side 50 minutes in we're almost at the zero degrees and for the freezer side we're gonna throw some ice cream sandwiches in there gotta have those on a nice hot day and some freezer pops and just as a precaution i'm going to leave these in a ziploc bag in case they melt but they shouldn't throw a few more drinks in here and ready to go so one pretty cool feature about this battery and cooler as well is that when this battery is in the cooler you can actually run the cooler off of solar and recharge the battery off of solar and it's recommended to use a 100 watt panel i tried this with my opez 100 watt panel plugged into the cooler and ran this thing non-stop all day when the sun was out with a fairly dead battery it recharged that battery throughout the day and ran the cooler the whole day with half the cooler being on refrigerator mode and half being on freezer mode i'm going to do some more testing with it but that is awesome if i could take this thing to the bmx races throw one solar panel out leave the cooler run while charging a battery and still have a little bit of capacity after the sun goes down that's pretty amazing in my opinion and one very very nice feature that i like now you can charge these batteries directly from the solar panel i tested this out i was a little bit leery at first they don't really give you much information about how to recharge these it says usb-c but you need a usb-c hub that doesn't come with it and no cables or no charging brick or anything comes with these batteries to recharge them so they rely on you recharging them in the cooler i would like to be able to recharge them out of the cooler i did buy an optional power supply to be able to recharge these but like i said there's really nothing in the manual that tells you what you need to buy to charge these externally or how you should do it it just says it could be recharged with solar or usb-c and i don't know how you would recharge usb-c maybe if you buy a usb-c to 55 21 maybe that will do it um, i might get a cable and try that in the future but so far i tested this with just plugging solar in and it did seem to charge at i believe it was like around 40 some watts now once the battery got full it did shut off and quit drawing wattage automatically so i'm not sure if this has some kind of bms in it or not i would hope so because if not that could be dangerous but again it doesn't really tell you anything in the manual and that's not with just new air cooler batteries that's with any batteries uh, even other manufacturers they don't really give you any information on these so like i said i would assume that there there is some kind of bms in this to allow you to charge it directly from solar and Jason Oid, I watched his video and he said the same that you could charge these from solar but it would be nice to have a little bit more information on safety as far as does it have like a solar charge regulator in here or some kind of BMS to allow this to recharge I don't know guys but I tested it and it seemed to work so I don't have a problem with using it like that all right guys we got the car loaded up with the bike with the cooler this is the way i have it put in here i'm going to keep this vent facing forward this way i flip the lid around so that it opens from this side so you can get to it easily and this is what it looks like in the back of a honda crv still plenty of room to open the lid completely up which is nice and it's actually showing when it's plugged into the car the voltage of the internal battery not the voltage coming from the car i believe 12.3 volts on there and I have it running off the car here, plugged into the cigarette lighter, and it's using currently 54 watts of power, 4.15 amps. And the light is green on the battery, and the blue bars are flashing, which means the battery is charging from the vehicle. And it's actually using about 80 watts, 6.14 amps from the vehicle cigarette lighter port and the battery is installed in the cooler. All right guys, so we made it here. The car is still running and it's using 50 watts of power. The light is green on the battery, which means it's charging. I'm gonna shut the car off and we'll see what happens. No power going from here. And the light automatically turned blue and the cooler is still running. Now it's running off the battery. All right, so the cooler is at 37 degrees on the big side zero degrees on the little side and the battery is sitting at 12.4 volts with it not running and 12.6 is fully charged and when it's sitting idle about 10.3 from my testing that's about dead uh, when it's running it's around 9.7 i believe right before the unit shuts off from low voltage Nine, seven right around front back and toss. hey bud you hot yeah, a lot. <laughs> All right, I got something to cool them down. We actually packed some wet rags in here and threw them in the freezer. 
and that's gonna cool him down putting them around his neck no take him out of the bag silly oh, <laughs> how was your first ride on the bike good on the new bike good ride good yep sweet pretty sweaty on all them clothes riding the track feel good yeah sweet with 90, with 90 degree weather <laughs> cold yes yeah. so yep yeah, nice cold super cold rags perfect in here in the freezer for the racetrack and let's check the temperatures in here we got about 15 degrees in this one right over about 42 in that one and ice cream sandwiches are good freeze pops are still frozen very nice guys very nice i love the dual compartment and the freezer side on this one it's totally a game changer for situations like this all right guys so we just got back to the car and just left the race he got third place not bad for the first race of the year so he's back there eating an ice cream sandwich so they stayed nice and frozen which is good it's been three hours and 50 minutes since we left my house 40 minutes of that was on the way here with the cooler plugged in so the battery lasted about three hours when i got back to the car it said f3 on the cooler and i'm assuming that was low voltage because when i plugged the i'll have to look in the manual i'll put it up here on the screen what that means i could see that the compartments were getting a little warm and the compressor was trying to kick on but couldn't kick on completely and once i started the car it kicked back on and is now using 91 watts actually pulling from the car at 7 amps so it did keep everything cold for about three hours off the battery and again that's with one side being freezer mode set down to zero degrees and the refrigerator mode set at 35 degrees so overall pretty good guys happy with that now i know the limitations of it and it was pretty hot when we left pretty hot in the car it did cool down there at the end but overall i'm pretty impressed with it if i would have put a solar panel out and let it run off of that definitely would have ran a lot longer because i tried it with a solar panel before and ran it all day with solar so we'll see what the temperature is and what the battery voltage is when we get back to the house all right so we got back here to the house the f3 error code went away and didn't show the whole time on the way home after i started the car everything's back down the temperature and it's sitting idle at 10.9 volts which shows two battery bars so again i don't know why this thing quit working when it hit 10.8 volts earlier but in the manual it says f3 is the possible cause compressor starts too frequently and it says to disconnect it for 30 minutes and then restart it and basically that's what it tells you to do for any error code other than f1 which is a possible low voltage to the fridge so if you guys get any error codes just unplug it shut it off for about 30 minutes and start it back up i guess that's like a reset however i didn't really have to do that all i did was have to start the car and the f3 error code went away and it worked flawlessly cooled back down the temperature and charged the battery up slightly on the 40 minute ride back home another nice feature about this cooler is it does have a usb port here that you can keep your devices charged now one thing about this if you're running this cooler off battery power keep in mind that you are going to be using the power from that battery to charge your devices so you'll get less runtime out of your cooler now this is only a one amp output port so you're only going to be charging your devices at about five watts max but it is nice to have that backup power if i have this thing plugged in with a solar panel i could plug my phone in here and keep both of these items running and charged up which is a very nice feature to have all right so i let it run for a little while it's still running at 9.9 .9 volts this is with the refrigerator currently on and the battery bars just went completely out at 9.9 .9. so about 9.9 .9, it's pretty much dead this compartment's 38 degrees and this one is currently about 28 degrees so a little bit off from what the temperature is set at but those wet rags that i put in there are frozen solid ice cream sandwiches are still frozen and freeze pops are still frozen so it's working pretty good i haven't gotten any more error codes so i'm not sure why it gave me the e3 code when it was at 10.8 volts but it definitely works down lower than that so it probably runs longer than three hours on a battery charge according to the testing that i did today all right guys so one last test today i took this cooler on a rc rock crawl had it in the car at around a 75 degree ambient temperature but it was way hotter than that in the car it ran off that battery no problem for four hours and when i came back to the car everything was perfect frozen on the freezer side ice cream sandwiches and freezer pops again 
water on the refrigerator side with some snacks and some sandwiches. Never got the F3 error code and still had two battery bars left of power. So as you can see, 10 degree difference made a big difference, especially when this cooler is sitting in your car in the hot sun because it is way hotter in your car when it is like that. So I do not recommend that for best efficiency. You'd want to leave maybe a window crack to keep your car cooler inside or to have this thing out in the shade if you were camping, have it underneath the canopy or something in the shade and you would definitely get a lot more runtime out of those batteries than what I did in this test. But I wanted to put it through a worst case scenario test and with it being in a super hot car, that really did work this cooler and it still performed really well in my opinion. So right now we have this cooler running off of a 100 watt Opez solar panel. That's what they recommend, 100 watt. And the sun is actually going down, the panel's starting to get shaded. So I'm only getting 9.3 watts right now, 9, 8.8. .8. In the normal sun, whenever that panel's in the sun, you get a max of about four amps and 45 watts coming into the cooler through solar. But you do wanna larger solar panel than say like a 60 watt panel. That way, if it does get shaded or if the sun goes behind a cloud, you'll still get some decent output into the cooler. And you can see that the battery level is going up, which means it's charging. And another nice feature is this cooler does come with a bottle opener. I forgot to mention that earlier. That's always nice to see. And it does have a LG compressor. So nice quality compressor in there, which comes with a one year warranty. And the wheels and the handle on this thing makes it really easy to wheel around and transport when you have it loaded up. And like I said, the one I had has a broken handle, but they did reach out to me and are sending me a replacement, which has a new handle on it. So really awesome customer service. All right, guys, so I just wanted to jump in here real quick. I did get the new cooler that they sent as a replacement. You can see this one has the handle on it. You just hit these buttons, it pulls it out, and you can wheel it really easy. But one thing I wanted to show you really quickly was something that I made for this. Even though this isn't a dual lid cooler, what I did was I made a little cover for this side so when you're using this as a refrigerator and freezer when you're opening it up to get in the fridge you don't have to expose the freezer side to hot air and i put a little pull tab here you can just get in there and it definitely keeps this a lot colder and probably a lot more efficient when it's 85 90 degrees outside basically i just cut a piece of cardboard and the cardboard itself was working just fine but then i had this bubble wrap that I had from some HelloFresh deliveries. So I cut that up and covered that cardboard with it and just taped it around the edges. And now it's a nice little cover here. Almost acts as a dual lid now. So pretty awesome guys. One thing to keep in mind about this handle, it does stick out a few inches from the cooler. So it may not fit in the CRV as well with this handle on there. It would have been nice if this would have retracted more and if they would have gave you a handle down here as well. That way you could remove this if you wanted to, but it is definitely really nice for wheeling it around. Overall guys, I'm loving the dual compartments. They do make a different one that's like 80 some quarts that has a dual lid, which I would like to see and check out maybe in the future. And they also have a humongous 115 quart cooler that runs off of a battery as well. So maybe I'll get the opportunity to test one of those out. Hopefully we can, and we could see how long that one would run on a battery and what kind of energy it uses. And as always guys, I'll leave a link down below in the description. It will be an affiliate link. So if you guys wanna see more details on this cooler or pick one up for yourselves, make sure you guys use the coupon code that I'll leave down below if they give me one so that you guys can save a few bucks. And that will be an affiliate link. So if you use it, I will make a small commission at no extra cost to you. And that's what helps support this channel. So thanks for watching everyone. If you found this video helpful and interesting, please consider hitting the thumbs up button and leaving a comment down below because it really helps my channel out. And please consider subscribing and I will definitely see you guys around on the next one in the future. Thanks for watching everyone. Whew.